Okay. Now let's look at this picture because there's some notation here and one reason we're doing this is I want you to get used to the notations that you're going to see as you continue studying mathematics, okay? That'll give you a big advantage because you won't get as hung up on the notation. Um, so, what I've represented here is kind of an enlargement and a wider picture of maybe one of these intervals, right? So, what I'm saying is that, okay, x sub 0 is going to be a, okay? And then we have x sub 1, x sub 2, and what do you think the next one's going to be? x sub 3. Yeah, so you got, the, you got that pattern quick, okay? <laughs> and I'm not going to label them all. I'm not even going to count them. But I'm going to say that b equals x sub n. So they're n intervals, okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, if I want to talk about just any old interval, well, I've got to have a notation for just any old interval, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say I could equal 1, 2, 3, up to M, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Then the ith interval and a bunch of other things, and I better not even say it because I screwed it up again. Interval. Goes from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. Like, where does the third interval start and end on my picture here? It goes from x2 to x3, right? Yeah. First interval goes from x0 to x1, mm -hmm. second goes from x1 to x2, and the third one goes from x2 to x3, right? Yeah. So if you want the ith interval, it ends at x sub i, meaning it starts at x sub i minus 1. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like the 784th interval, i is what? 784. Yeah. So it would end at x what? Yeah, so whatever, whichever one of these is 784, that would end at that one. And x sub i minus 1, well, if i is 744, yeah. then this is 743, right? Yeah. I, I got the debate, because I already had 744 and 743 in my mind, and then I stopped and said, oh, wow, didn't I do the 743rd or 744th? Okay, I got up an hour or two early this morning. I have an excuse. Okay. What's that bad? It's like that for the rest of it. Okay. So I'm probably going to live through the day. Now, xi minus 1, xi. So you understand what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure because that can be a confusing notation if you haven't seen it before. There's, I, th I think, a pretty thorough explanation of what it means and why we use it. If you can think of a better way to talk about a typical interval, Go ahead and talk about it that way. Just make sure everybody else is on the page with you. Um, okay, so when we start labeling our trapezoid, how high is this one? Well, if the function is f of x, then the value of the function when x is equal to x i minus 1 is f of x i minus 1, right? In other words, whatever number is here, you plug it into the function, and that's how you denote it, right? Okay, everybody understand that? Because y'all did real well with function notation yesterday. We're going to push you on that a little bit, but you're doing well. Okay? And this is f of x i, right? Okay, so tell me, I'm going to let you work it out. I'll give you just a couple minutes. In, in these symbols, in terms of these symbols, what's the area and what's the slope? 